Hi, this is Dr. David Ross at the Virginia Institute of Neuropsychiatry, and I'm here to talk to you today about Neuroquan and mold-related illness. Neuroquan is a method approved by the FDA for measuring MRI brain volume in human subjects. Mold-related illness is uh, an important problem nowadays affecting a lot of people. Uh, it occurs when people are exposed to damp, moldy environments. It can be caused not only by mold, actually, but also other microorganisms, or by the biotoxins associated with mold or these other microorganisms. It causes a wide variety of medical disorders, including immune disorders, like allergies and inflammation. It causes respiratory disorders, like asthma, wheezing, runny nose. And it also causes neurological disorders. Now, uh, mold-related symptoms uh, include a variety of neurological or neuropsychiatric symptoms. Uh, first of all, there's cognitive impairment, so people can have trouble concentrating or paying attention. They can have trouble remembering things. Uh, they can have trouble processing their thoughts. Other mold-related neuropsychiatric symptoms include pain, fatigue, which is a low level of energy, uh, trouble sleeping, uh, impaired balance and coordination problems. Now, unfortunately, despite the suffering that these patients experience, there are a fair number of people who doubt or wonder whether or not these patients really have some medical problem or regarding the neuropsychiatric symptoms of brain problem. Because a little bit similar to our traumatic brain injury patients, uh, which I also work with, Patients with mold-related illness um, often tend to look fairly normal when you just look at them or talk to them in casual conversation, et cetera. But if you talk to them, they'll tell you about the problems they have. So other people sometimes wondering, is the patient uh, really sick or they may be taking advantage of the situation? And if we can have objective tests uh, to measure the effects of the mold-related illness, it would be very valuable for understanding what's going on with these illnesses and my particular area of interest, the brain, eventually how we might treat it, uh, but also in the shorter term just to allow us to know the truth about what's happening to these patients. Fortunately, there has been some research with brain measurement in these patients. There are a few published studies on brain function using a technique called SPECT, uh, an acronym spelled S-P-E-C-T stands for single photon emission computed tomography and it shows cross-sectional images of the brain that reflect the blood flow in the brain and researchers have found that in patients with mold related illness there's various uh, sites of either increased or decreased blood flow in the brain and what is an uh, abnormal pattern. More recent data have found that there are also structural brain imaging abnormalities specifically abnormal volume in these patients with mold-related illness. So far, NeuroQuant has been the brain volume measurement technique used. And these data show that, uh, in general, uh, multiple regions of the brain are abnormally enlarged in patients with mold-related illness, although one small area ca called the caudate nucleus, which is deep in the brain, is uh, decreased in volume in these patients. Uh, so there's an abnormal pattern of brain volume in these patients, and it appears to be a fairly distinct pattern. I don't know of another brain illness that has that type of pattern of enlargement of most regions and uh, small size of the caudate nucleus. We're not sure why many brain regions are abnormally enlarged. Uh, we hypothesize that it's related to uh, inflammation or swelling, but we're really not sure. Uh, and this distinct pattern of findings is different, from example, from our patients with mild or moderate traumatic brain injury who have mostly shrinking of multiple brain regions, although even, even the mild TBAP patients do have enlargement of a couple regions, we think probably in the cerebellum and brainstem. And I'll tell you more about that in another video. So in summary, Mold-related illness causes a variety of medical symptoms, including neuropsychiatric and neurological symptoms. 
It's associated with functional and structural brain abnormalities. Uh, and NeuroQuant shows a, what appears to be a fairly distinct pattern of brain volume abnormalities in patients with mold-related illness. And this information may help vindicate what our patients are telling us that they have problems with their mental functioning and with their brain function and that we need to try to understand it and then look for treatments to help our patients with these symptoms.